Let's walk on the wise path. Have you ever wondered if what you see around you is actually real? I mean, take a second to really think about it. What if everything you touch, feel, and experience is nothing more than an illusion, a mirage designed to keep you functioning? Sounds like the stuff of science fiction, right? But what if it's not? Enter Donald Hoffman, a cognitive scientist whose research is turning everything we think we know upside down. Hoffman suggests that the reality we live in, the one defined by space and time, might not be real in the way we've always believed. Imagine waking up one day and realizing that the very fabric of your world is a well-crafted illusion. Hoffman's theories are challenging the foundational concepts of physics, perception, and existence itself, offering an entirely new perspective on what's real and what's not. Trust me, what you're about to hear will make you question everything. So, buckle up, because in this video, we're going to dive headfirst into one of the most mind-bending ideas of modern science, the possibility that reality as we know it is just a clever trick designed to help us survive. Ready to have your mind blown? All right, let's dive a little deeper. We've all been taught that space and time are the cornerstones of reality, right? From the time we're kids, we learn that objects exist in space and events unfold over time. It's so fundamental to our understanding of life that we don't even question it. But here's the thing, Donald Hoffman is questioning it and what he's proposing could change the way we understand everything. Hoffman is a cognitive neuroscientist who has spent years studying how our brains perceive the world. And he's come to a shocking conclusion space and time aren't the bedrock of reality. Instead, they're more like a user interface a simplified version of the truth designed to help us navigate the world. Think of it like the icons on your smartphone. You don't see the complex software running in the background. You just see the icons that make it easy for you to interact with your phone. Hoffman believes our perception of space and time works the same way. It's just there to help us survive, not to reveal the deeper, true nature of reality. Stick around because we're about to dive deep into this radical new way of thinking. Let's start by unpacking the basic idea. For centuries, humanity has operated under the assumption that space and time are fundamental. Everything we know about physics, biology, and even our day-to-day -day lives rests on these two pillars. From Einstein's theory of relativity to the laws of motion, space and time are treated as the framework within which everything happens. But what if we've had it wrong this whole time? According to Hoffman, space-time isn't the real deal. It's just an interface designed by evolution. And why? To help us survive. Think about it this way. When you use a computer, you interact with a screen filled with icons and windows. You don't need to know anything about the code or the hardware working behind the scenes to get things done. In the same way, Hoffman argues that our perception of space and time is just a simplified interface that helps us interact with the world efficiently. The real workings of the universe, the code behind the screen, are hidden from us. But why would evolution give us this simplified interface? Simply put, it's because knowing the truth wouldn't help us survive, navigating efficiently would. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Imagine you're playing a video game, like an action adventure where you explore different landscapes, solve puzzles and fight enemies. What you see on the screen is a beautiful world full of vibrant colors, characters, and objects you can interact with. But all of that is just a surface level representation of the real workings of the game code. You don't need to understand the thousands of lines of code that generate the graphics. You just need the visuals to play the game. Hoffman argues that our perception of the world works the same way. Space time. The world we see around us is the visuals of the game of life. It's a simple, effective way for us to interact with the environment and survive. We don't need to know what's really going on behind the scenes to make decisions, avoid danger, or seek out resources. Just like in a game, the user interface is designed to be efficient, not to reveal the truth. According to Hoffman, evolution has given us a simplified user-friendly interface space-time that helps us survive, 
that hides the deeper reality underneath. So, if space and time are just a user interface, what is reality, really? Hoffman's theory takes us down a path that feels almost philosophical, yet deeply rooted in science. He suggests that what we perceive as solid, tangible objects don't exist independently of us observing them. Imagine walking into a dark room with a flashlight. You only see the objects where the light shines, right? Hoffman's idea is similar. The objects around us, the chair, the cup, even the people, only come into existence when we perceive or interact with them. Before that, they're just part of a hidden code. This leads to the conclusion that there's no objective reality as we traditionally understand it. Nothing exists on its own without perception. It's as if reality is created in real time, specifically for our survival. But if that's true, what's behind it? What's the code running the whole system? Hoffman believes we may never fully know, but one thing's for sure, what we experience as reality is just a thin, practical layer designed by evolution, and it's far from the ultimate truth. Now, let's take this a step further. If space-time is just an interface, what lies beyond it? What's the code behind the illusion? This is where things get even more mind-bending. Hoffman argues that to understand reality at a deeper level, we have to be willing to step beyond space-time entirely. But how do we even begin to do that? Think about the idea of a virtual reality headset. When you put it on, you're immersed in a digital world. You see buildings, people, even entire cities. But if you took off the headset, you'd see that none of those things are real. Hoffman suggests that we're all wearing a kind of evolutionary headset space-time and that everything we perceive is part of this limited interface. To see what's truly out there, we'd have to remove the headset and explore beyond space-time. But can we even do that? Can science reveal what lies beyond this illusion? This is where Hoffman's work becomes both exciting and deeply challenging. He believes that exploring the nature of consciousness might be the key to understanding what's behind the curtain of reality. Here's the crux of Hoffman's theory. Consciousness is not just something that happens in your brain. It's the foundation of everything. It's not a byproduct of neurons firing. It's the main event. Hoffman argues that what we think of as the physical universe matter, energy, space, and time, is actually a projection of consciousness. Think of it like a movie projector. The film, the light, and the images on the screen aren't real in and of themselves. They're just projections. Hoffman believes that our entire reality works this way, with consciousness acting as the projector and space-time as the film. Everything we experience is filtered through this conscious lens. This means that space-time is not the ultimate reality, but a product of consciousness itself. In this view, consciousness isn't just something that happens inside our heads, it's the very fabric of existence. It's like the ultimate force behind everything we experience. And if that's the case, then reality isn't what we think it is. It's something far more fluid and dynamic, shaped by the mind itself. Now, here's where the real challenge for science comes in. We live in a world where technology is advancing at an incredible pace. We've got artificial intelligence, quantum computers, and robots that can do some pretty amazing things. But despite all this progress, science still hasn't been able to explain consciousness. Sure, we can map brain activity, and we know which parts of the brain are responsible for different functions. But no one can explain how consciousness the experience of being aware, of tasting a sweet strawberry, or hearing your favorite song actually works. Hoffman points out that no computer program, no matter how advanced, can replicate this subjective experience. A machine might be able to recognize a picture of a strawberry, but it will never know what it feels like to taste one. That's the big mystery of consciousness, and science hasn't cracked it yet. Hoffman's theory suggests that consciousness is not something that can be generated by neurons or algorithms. It's deeper, more fundamental than that. And if science is ever going to understand reality, it might have to rethink its approach to consciousness. Let's talk about the brain for a second. Most of us have been taught that the brain is the control center for everything we experience. 
It processes information, makes decisions, and even creates consciousness. At least, that's what traditional science tells us. But Hoffman is turning this idea on its head. He suggests that even the brain is part of the interface, not the source of consciousness. Think of it like a car's dashboard. The dashboard gives you important information, your speed, fuel levels, and maybe even navigation directions. But it doesn't tell you how the engine works. It's just there to help you interact with the car. In the same way, the brain is just part of the interface we use to interact with the world. It doesn't create consciousness. It's just one piece of the puzzle. According to Hoffman, the brain itself only exists when we perceive it, just like everything else in space-time. It's a practical tool, but not the whole story. And if consciousness isn't something the brain generates, then what is? That's the million-dollar question Hoffman is trying to answer. Now, let's shift gears and talk about something you've probably never heard of before, the amplitudehedron. It's a fascinating new concept in physics, and it might just be a clue to understanding what lies beyond space-time. The amplitudehedron is a geometric structure that describes how particles interact with each other. But here's the kicker. It does this without using space or time. That's right. Scientists have discovered a way to explain particle interactions that doesn't rely on the concepts of space-time at all. This is huge because it suggests that the universe we experience, with its familiar dimensions of space and time, is just one layer of a much deeper, more complex reality. Think of the amplitudehedron as a map, showing us how particles behave in a realm beyond space-time. Hoffman points to discoveries like these as evidence that space-time is just an evolutionary interface. If these new geometries can describe the universe without needing space and time, then maybe space-time really is just a limited, simplified model, an illusion we use to navigate life. The amplitudehedron could be our first glimpse into the deeper workings of reality. So, what does all of this mean for science as we know it? Well, it means we might be at the very beginning of a new frontier in human understanding. For centuries, science has relied on observation and measurement to make sense of the world. But what if the tools we're using are limited by our perceptions? If space-time is just an interface, then the scientific methods we've been using might only give us a partial view of reality. Hoffman's work is forcing us to ask some big questions. Can science really uncover the truth of the universe? Or are we limited by the very framework we're using? To fully understand consciousness, reality, and the universe, we may need to develop new tools and methods that go beyond space-time, like trying to solve a puzzle with missing pieces. We're making progress, but we might not even have all the pieces yet. The discoveries of structures like the amplitudehedron suggest that we're on the verge of something big, a new way of understanding the universe that goes beyond our current models. But Hoffman's theory isn't just an intellectual exercise. It has real implications for how we live our lives. If consciousness really is the foundation of everything, then our thoughts, perceptions, and beliefs play a much bigger role in shaping reality than we ever imagined. This idea isn't entirely new. Philosophers like Neville Goddard and Joseph Murphy have been talking about the power of the mind for decades. Goddard's famous quote, feeling is the secret, suggests that our emotions and mental states are what create our experiences. Hoffman's theory takes this to another level by suggesting that the physical world itself is shaped by consciousness. This means that the reality we experience is not fixed or unchangeable. It's fluid, and it's shaped by the way we perceive and think. If we can learn to tap into this deeper level of consciousness, we might be able to change not just our experiences, but the very fabric of the world around us. The mind is more powerful than we've ever realized, and Hoffman's work is helping us understand just how deep that power goes. So, what does this all mean for you? It means that you have more power to shape your reality than you might think. If space-time is just an interface, and consciousness is the force behind it, then the way you see the world isn't fixed. It's malleable. By changing your thoughts, beliefs, and perceptions, you can literally change the world around you. 
This isn't just some esoteric concept. It's a practical idea that has been echoed by spiritual teachers, philosophers, and now, even scientists like Hoffman. If you've ever heard of the power of positive thinking or the law of attraction, then you've already been introduced to this idea on a basic level. But Hoffman's theory suggests that it goes much deeper than that. The very structure of reality is shaped by consciousness, and since we are conscious beings, we have the ability to influence it. So, if you've ever felt like you're stuck in life, or that things can't change, think again. The power to change your reality is in your hands, or rather, in your mind. Let's bring this back to you and your everyday life. What Hoffman's work is really saying is that you're not just a passive observer in the universe. You're an active participant. The way you see the world is not set in stone. It can be transformed, and the power to do that is within you. Imagine what you could achieve if you started to understand and apply these ideas in your own life. What if you could reshape your reality just by changing the way you think? It might sound like science fiction, but if Hoffman is right, it's much closer to science fact. The way you perceive the world, the way you interpret experiences, and the way you think about yourself and others all have the potential to shape the world around you. Reality isn't some unchangeable rigid thing, it's flexible, and it's influenced by consciousness. So what are you waiting for? The power to change begins with a decision, a decision to see beyond the obvious, to tap into the deeper layers of consciousness, and to start shaping your world in a whole new way. Let me know your thoughts on Donald Hoffman's theories and how they've changed your view of reality. Do you think space-time is just an interface? Could consciousness be the true foundation of everything? Let's start a conversation, because I want to hear from you. And hey, if you're looking for a way to tap into your own deeper consciousness, I've got something special for you. We've developed an audio tool pack designed to help you connect with your inner self through meditation. If you want to explore this incredible tool and unlock new levels of consciousness, click the link below to gain immediate access. This could be the first step in transforming your reality and experiencing the world in a whole new way. Thanks for watching. Guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. There's so much more to explore when it comes to consciousness and reality, and I can't wait to dive deeper with you. See you in the next video.